Okay, welcome to another video. So I'm still on my run through the Ubuntu 20.10 betas, but I promise we're very close towards the end now. There's perhaps one, maybe two more I need to check out after this, and then I'm covered until the final release. So the one we're looking at today is Lubuntu, which of course is one of the more lightweight flavors of Ubuntu that features the LXQT desktop. So we're in the live environment right now. The ISO size for this one was around about 1.8 GB which almost makes it the smallest if it wasn't for Zubuntu, which was 1.7. So the installation process is going to be a little bit different compared to some of the other flavors we've checked out, as it doesn't use the Ubiquiti Ubuntu installer, it uses Calamares, version 3.2.24. So we're going to set our language, and it's usually just one level down for British English. Perfect, so we're going to hit enter and press next. So it's got the American region by default, so what we want to do is either scroll through here and change it to Europe on here, or we can just hover our mouse to around about the place we want. And as you can see, it's now changed the region to Europe and the zone to London. And it's got the correct keyboard layout, so let's just test that with the little box below to make sure everything's working as it should. Perfect. Next. Okay, so we're going to be using the exact same drive that I've been using for all of the flavors, which is Sabrent, the NVMe drive. So we're going to erase disk. And a cool thing about Calamara is it gives you a better sort of overview of the before and after of your disk partition. So as you can see at the moment, we have a completely free disk. And then afterwards, we'll have a two partition layout, one for EFI and then the rest all at root using EXT4. OK, it's time to name our computer. And as the logo is a bird, we're going to call this one Bird Boy. There we go. And as per usual, we're going to log in automatically. So we get a little installation summary here to just sort of preview our options before we go ahead and install just in case we've got something wrong and it all looks good to me so we're going to go ahead and install now as soon as i click install now i'll be starting my stopwatch and we'll be back in just a moment okay installation has complete and this one clocked in around about one minute and 58 seconds making it one of the fastest of the ubuntu flavors installations we've seen so far so what we're going to do is reboot and check out our freshly installed lubuntu desktop Right, and here we are. So first things first, we've got the update notifier to tell us there are some installations and upgrades to get. So let's just quickly see what we've got. So we're getting the Linux image 5.8.023 as well as the headers and modules. And then in upgrade, we have quite a lot. So it looks like it's gonna be a full upgrade. So what we're gonna do is pause the video while this is happening and then we'll come back to it once it's complete. Okay, the upgrade has completed. It took a little while, but there was quite a few packages it was upgrading there. I did notice it said it was updating the Lubuntu artwork. So hopefully when we come back, we'll have some newer wallpapers to take a look at. So I'm gonna restart and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so here we are. I thought I'd quickly show you the grub screen here. Very simple bootloader. So whatever selection you're on will be highlighted in yellow. We want the top one, which is Lubuntu, despite it saying Ubuntu. Okay, we are back with a nice new wallpaper. I don't think this is one of the new 20.10 wallpapers, but regardless, it's much better than the previous one that had the 20.04 branding and it looks a bit more modern and sets the tone for the desktop a lot better. So starting with just the overall desktop setup, there's not too much to go over here. Very simple and straightforward layout. Of course, you have your traditional icons on your desktop. Right click will let you create a new folder or a blank file, as well as paste, select all, invert selection, sorting by name, date, owner, etc. We then have show hidden, hide desktop items, create launcher, and then desktop preferences. So in here we can change our wallpaper. It's not the most advanced wallpaper switcher. You'll be in the folder of your wallpapers, you'll hit browse, and then we can see all of the wallpapers we have installed. So do we have any fancy new 20.10 wallpapers? I don't think so. Okay, not to worry. Okay, so moving further down to our screen now, we have our panel, which is at the bottom, but can be moved towards the top or anywhere you might like it. So if we go into configure panel, so the default size is 32, which doesn't look too bad, to be honest, on this sort of color scheme. And in, in your widgets, we have the application menu, which is something I'm not a huge fan of on the LXQT or Lubuntu. I just think it feels a bit dated and it does. it's not like a fast application launcher. You've kind of got your categories here and it just feels very old school. And we have a search bar at the bottom. I wouldn't mind this being sort of more sort of redesigned with a modern feel, even if it was made to be a bit more like the whisker menu, for example. And just to the next of it, we have the desktop switcher. And by default, we have four desktops to choose from. And it will go in the left to right motion. There doesn't appear to be any animations. When you're changing desktops, it will just go from one to the other very quickly. We then have a couple of quick launches. And we have the files manager, 
Firefox and a show desktop button. We then have our task manager and removable media which is this one here. We then have our volume control and then we can jump straight into the mixer like so. We then have system tray, status notifier, plugin and the world clock. And then clicking that will then pop up a nice little calendar. Here's our notification area so we can clear it all and then they are gone. Right, so I'm not too sure what new applications there might be on here because I don't think they've actually fully published any release notes yet. So we're just going to sort of go over it and see if there's anything that we can recognize that might be new. So we have Arc for archives, Featherpad is your text editor. We then have KCalc, PCMan FM, which is of course your default files manager for LXQT. I often find that the layout's always a little bit off and you have to just sort of rearrange it to be a bit more manageable. There we go. Let's keep going. We then have Clipper, which was the little clipboard we saw at the bottom there. Qt Pass Text Info, and it does have Vim installed out of the box, so a nice little terminal based text editor. Compton for Screen Compositor, I don't know if it's enabled though. Noble Note, which I've not actually used too much, but it appears to be a nice little desktop note taking application. So here's our default, we can create a new notebook, let's call it Test. And now that we've made that, can we, there we go, we can right click here, press new note inside of our test notebook. And let's just go blah, 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 hit enter. And then we can open up that little note task there and then write whatever we want. And does it auto save? Let's have a look. Okay, it does indeed. So that's a very straightforward and nice and easy to use little desktop note taking application there. Let's keep going. So that's the last in the accessories. Now in games, we have 2048 QT. Graphics, we have LX Image, LibreOffice Draw, Screen Grab, and Scan Light. So the screen capture tool, it looks a bit dated, but it has pretty much all of the functions that you'll get in pretty much all of the other screenshot tools in other distributions and desktops. And it should be assigned to a full screen screenshot of our print screen key on our keyboard. Perfect, it is indeed. So nothing too flashy here, but we can now save that into our pictures folder with a save button here. And then if we go a little down to the type you can see that we can also do window screen area and last selected so let's give it a go of a screen area so let's go and click new and then we can drag it to any sort of position we want let's get it to about there and then it's double click or press enter to take screenshot there we go so pretty straightforward it doesn't look flashy but it's got everything you should really need out of a default screenshot tool now i do believe that's everything in graphics so in internet now we have our stuff for the Bluetooth, so Blue Devil, Send File and Wizard. Firefox is and remains your default web browser. We have Quasal IRC. Transmission, but the QT version, because of course we are on LXQT. Let's keep going. And then we have Trojita as our email client. I'd never know if I'm saying this right, but I have used this before in my previous looks at Lubuntu, and I don't mind. It's quite a nice minimal email client, not too many advanced features. If you wanted something more advanced, you might want to go ahead and install Thunderbird or something like that. Let's keep moving. And of course, it will now be in your system tray. So if we just right click there, we can quit that and keep going. So that's everything in Internet. Now in Office, we have again QPDF view and the full LibreOffice suite. So let's see what this looks like with our default theme, which is the Lubuntu Arc theme. But as you'll notice, we do get a bit of a weird blue border around it when a windows focus which i'm not a huge fan of so what i'll tend to do is install a different theme for the open box which is what's controlling that windows border there and open box is of course your window manager so the reason why i don't really need it so at the moment this window is focused and you'll notice that the text here is completely sort of bold and highlighted and the text in our windows title bar on the unfocused one isn't so when we change it will then switch it over so that will help me know what windows focused and i don't really need the blue border but we should be on the latest version of LibreOffice, which of course is 7.0.2.2 and do we have dictionary support installed out of the box okay we don't appear to that's quite strange so we've got automatic spell checking enabled but it's not actually spell checking which is quite weird for an ubuntu sort of distro you'd expect it to have dictionary support out of the box so we might have to go ahead and download the LibreOffice dictionary extension to install it and get spell checking to work as it should okay let's keep going so I think that's everything in office so in sound and video now we have K3B pulse audio for our volume control and then we have 
VRC media player which is pretty much all you're going to need to play pretty much any file you can think of and it's my go-to media player for whatever distribution I'm using. So no music player or anything like that so we've just got VRC for pretty much all of the media we're going to be using. We then have the discover store as well as Moan package manager so there's two ways to manage packages on here. And I do believe that we don't have the snap store or any snaps installed. So if we do a snap list, as you can see, snapd is running, but we have no snaps installed. So we can install snaps in the discover store, though, I think. Let's test it. I'm pretty sure the plugin will be enabled. So if we type in Caden Live, as you can see there, we've got two options. Scrolling down to the source will then let you know that that is indeed the snap. And the top one will be from the repos. There we go. Groovy Gorilla. Let's keep going. So then the other way is move on, which is a bit like Synaptic. So you can do a bit more sort of granular, in-depth sort of package installations, removals, etc. using Moan. And we also have the updates there as well. So I think that's everything. We have HTOP installed out of the box. Let's see what HTOP says at the moment. So we're currently using about a gig RAM. We don't actually have a swap file, which is quite interesting. So most of all of the other flavors do create a swap file. Hmm, what we'll have to do then is create a swap file using either F allocate or DD at some point throughout this video. Okay, let's do not ask again and keep moving. So then we have the KDE partition manager, which is much like Gparted and will help you manage your disks, create partitions, destroy partitions, all of that good stuff. Let's keep moving. So is there anything else in system tools? Okay, so Q-Terminal is your default terminal and it also has the drop-down terminal with it, which means if you do a command like htop, for example, into your terminal and then press the shortcut key, which is usually 12, it will then run in the background, so pressing 12 again, htop will still be there. Now, I don't tend to use a lot of drop-down terminals, but it's pretty cool to have it when you need it. And we have QPS, which is a little sort of system monitor for Qt. So I think that's everything in system tools. So before we go through preferences, let's have a look at our alt tab switcher. So it's in sort of like a list like so. It's not the best ever sort of alt tab switcher. You don't get any sort of previews of the windows or anything, but it should be just about enough for you to jump around as you see fit. Okay, let's jump onto a new desktop. And I think the default shortcut for this is gonna be control alt, right, left, right, left, perfect. And now let's open up the configuration tool or configuration center and this is going to be home to all of your sort of settings for applications lxqt open box etc all from within this one window here so let's jump into appearance so i don't think the theming has changed whatsoever so we're still on the qt style of breeze the gtk 2 and 3 themes are arc darker icon is e papyrus and they do include a few other sort of variations of the papyrus theme as well as some others and then the LXQT theme is a Lubuntu Arc. Now if we were to open up the open box settings, here is where we're going to change the kind of border that you can see around these windows. So just to show you, if we were to change it to anything else, as you can see, that is controlling the borders of these applications. So what we're going to go ahead and do is jump into Firefox and download the Arc open box theme. Do 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 do. Yes, I agree from boxlook.org and let's go ahead and download this and this will be a archive file with some .obt archive kind of things in there I can't remember we'll have to double check that out so we'll just save that file for now into our downloads folder and now let's just extract this here and let's see yeah see .obt now we've got ones for the arc arc dark and arc darker I'm just going to go ahead and do arc dark for now so if we go back into the Open box settings here for our Windows Manager preferences. We can click install new theme. Go back to our downloads where we've extracted that folder. Now I don't think we can select more than one at a time. No, so we're just going to go for Arc Dark for now. There we go. Arc Dark was installed to home tyler.themes. So we should now automatically change to it. It has indeed. And as you can see, we no longer have that blue border. You might not be too bothered about the blue border. For me, it just makes things look a bit tacky or something but with that I'm much happier with that so what we're going to do now is close this off close this 
And now let's just have a look at a few of the other options that we can do in the control center. Here we go, let's just close that one. Here we are. So we can get to our power management as well. And of course, if we was using a laptop, we could enable the lid watcher, then choose what it does when you close the lid, either on battery or AC. We have the idle, let's disable that for now. And I do believe this has X screensaver on it as well. So where's our screensaver settings? Do, 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 do. Let's have a look. There we go. So as you can see there, X screensaver and the window looks pretty old by today's standards. But let's just quickly preview one of our desk. Whoa, that looked a bit crazy, didn't it? Okay, cool. So that's all working as it should. I think I can see a bit of screen tearing though. So what we're going to do is jump into Firefox. I'm going to quickly mute my speakers. Is that working? Okay. So the keyboard shortcut are working as they should. And now what we're going to do is jump to YouTube and get a nice little screen tearing test going. And that way we can see if there's any splits going in our video playback. So screen tearing test. And we're just going to use this one here. And of course we have a non-skippable ad. My favorite. One, zero. Okay, let's full screen. So I don't know if you can see it, but we have a nice little line break here, which lets you know we do indeed have screen tearing and it's pretty bad. So what we're going to need to do, there's a couple of ways we can go about it. So as we have Compton installed out of the box as our screen compositor, an easy way would be to just add something to the auto start. I can't exactly remember what we need to do to add to it. I always forget. So what we're going to do is just very quickly Google it. So we're going to go Compton auto start screen tear and there'll be a forum post or something with the command that we need here we go the MX Linux one will do it perfect this is the one we're going to want to use so it starts Compton with a few sort of additional flags for backend GLX paint on overlay vsync and OpenGL so we're going to copy that straight into our session session settings here and go to auto start so as you can see it hasn't actually auto started Compton anyway so we're going to add Compton and then copy that over and then what that will do is add that to our auto start and hopefully screen tearing will be gone so let's close that now some settings will not take effect until we log in so we'll do that now and then we'll test if screen tearing is still present so let's go to leave and here is where we can also get to hibernate log out shutdown suspend etc hibernate won't actually work though because we don't have a swap partition or file that's going to be large enough to suspend to disk so let's leave with log out that way we can see what our login screen looks like as well. Yeah, not too bad. So it's inherited, of course, the default wallpaper that we have got set on our desktop. So let's go ahead and log in. And hopefully, if we load that same video now, that screen tearing will no longer be present. So let's go back onto YouTube. And go for this one here. And watch that same little lever again. Or do we have to? No, perfect. Okay, so I can't see any tearing. Let's just skip it in a little bit. Perfect, so we've completely eliminated all of that screen tearing with that little command we've done with Compton on the auto start, and that saved us having to go crazy changing exorg files, etc. Nice. So what we're going to do now then is change things up a bit. So I'm more of a panel at the top, guys. So let's go straight back into our panel preferences and configure panel. And now let's check out some of the other positions. So we could go left which is not my kind of jam for that sort of panel. We can go right, which is never my jam for any kind of panel, or we can go to the top, which is what we're going to leave it on. And now if we go into, I might make it a little bit smaller as well. 26, we'll do the, yeah, that's fine. And then we're going to go into widgets and remove task manager. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do now is install Plank and a few other applications, grab some themes, and then we'll come back to it in just a moment. Okay, so I've installed Plank along with my favorite theme, which as you probably guessed is indeed Shade, and we've set that to size 38 with IntelliHide enabled for the Hide dock. Now what I want to check is whether we've got Windows splitting side by side, because that was one of my complaints from the last one. It didn't have Windows splitting enabled out of the box, because that is something you need to set in your open box file. So let's just have a little look. So dragging won't usually work because what dragging will do when you go to a screen edge is actually move the window to the next desktop and it's actually on a cycle. So when you're on desktop four, that'll bring you all the way back to desktop one and it will just keep going like that 
on a continuous cycle. So let's see if super left and right does anything. No. So if you wanted to go ahead and enable super left and right to do sort of window snapping side by side, you're going to want to go into your dot config, open box, and here you have your lxqtrc.xml file. And then you can set a lot of additional things here using open box, like keyboard shortcuts, etc. So if you want to play around with that to get keyboard shortcuts for splitting windows and all of that good stuff, that's where you're going to want to go and do it. Now what we want to do is to finish up is grab Caden Live and a few packages to edit this video and then we'll give some final thoughts at this towards the end. So let's open up the Discover Store. As it has the Snap plugin and I don't fancy going ahead and installing Flat Hub and Flat Pack at the moment, so we're just going to use the Snaps. So Caden Live and the Snap is the one at the very bottom here. So we're going to grab that. But we are going to also install GIMP using the native repos. And then we're going to see how much RAM we've managed to use. I'm going to predict quite a bit. So as Snap isn't using apt, we can install more than one package at once when we're using Snap and apt or Flatpak as well. So we're going to go sudo apt install GIMP. And there's going to be a lot of additional stuff it's going to grab for GIMP. So we're going to pause the video here and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we are back. We've installed GIMP. Caden Live and I've downloaded the dictionary for LibreOffice, I just haven't applied it yet. And we've also made a swap file. At first I tried to use Fallocate or F Allocate and it didn't work, it failed on the swap on. So what I did is deleted that swap file that I created and then did it with DD. And as you can see there we have a 1GB swap file, but you can make that as large as you wanted. So if you go into your FS tab file, you can see the new entry that we made there for swap file, swap swap defaults at 0, 0, so that's all working absolutely fine. Now let's open up Caden Live and make sure that's all working as it should. So it will take quite a while for the first ever time running it as it's a snap package. And while it's loading that, let's go into our files manager. Go into our downloads where I've downloaded the extension for the dictionary for LibreOffice and we're going to open that. Okay, we appear to have some weird warnings but we can't quite make out what it is <laughs> okay we've clicked something okay and Caden Live has just loaded up right I think what we're gonna have to do is re we're just gonna add it like this so if we go to our downloads now go to the dictionary close so hopefully if we restart it when we open it now we should have full dictionary support out of the box so let's test that out now Okay, that doesn't look quite right, does it? Let's close that up and reopen it. Let it sort of get its bearings. And now let's try and open up Writer once more. There we go. So let's just try and write something wrong. So, wax. Perfect. So we now have the English Dictionary working absolutely fine. And let's just start our project on Caden Live and make sure that's behaving as it should. So I've bookmarked some shares that I have on the network, but I think I've copied them over locally. So we should be able to just go straight into videos. And there's some of the recordings we've already started. So I think I'm going to wrap the video up there. Some final thoughts on LXQT on Lubuntu. I will be sort of rechecking this out when the final release is actually out, because I'd like to see what other changes have made it into the final release. But I think it gets an unfairly bad rap compared to a lot of the other flavors. And I think some of that's down to sort of the bitterness people had when it switched over to LXQT. And I won't lie, there are rough edges here and there that need to be ironed out. But I think it's just going to get better with each release. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There's a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.